السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك بسم الله last time we started with uh, the tafsir of سورة الواقعة and uh, we saw how Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, uh, has divided people in, in the day after into three groups أصحاب الميمنة وأصحاب المشأمة والسابقون These are the three groups So we talked at the beginning uh, Last time we talked about uh, السابقون السابقون And those people who, uh, who are uh, the forerunners And they hasten to do anything that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from their early life, they did nothing but good. And they were so righteous. So this was our first group that we talked about. And we started talking about Ashabul al maymana who, uh, who are the people of the right, and those people, uh, uh, from their from the beginning, they were not as good as the sabiqun as sabiqun. So they they did uh, something bad. Then they made istighfar and so on. So, but now they they ended up as mus as very righteous people. So these are the people who get their record in their right hand and they are called Ashabul Yameen. Uh, last time we stopped at uh, 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 Ayah 34 when uh, when we talked uh, a little bit i'm going to go a little bit back and we talked about ashab al yamin uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa ashab al yamin ma ashab al yamin fi sidr makhdud wa talh mandud wa dhill mamdud wa ma in maskub wa fakihat kathira la maqtu'at wa la mamnu'a so this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for <clears throat> the people of the right, the companions of the right, <clears throat> they will be uh, uh, enjoying these bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Now they are enjoying beds raised high. And here the, we will be talking about their, their wives. Indeed, we have produced the woman of paradise in a new creation. And we saw in Surah Yasin when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, They and their spouses in shade, reclining on adorned couches. So, if you say to someone that uh, your wife will be your the hurul in in Jannah, then he will say, "Oh my God, she going to follow me over there." And the same thing for the woman. If they tell her that your husband will be your uh, your husband in the Jannah, she will say, "Oh my God, I'm gonna uh, see him again there." But just just uh, remember that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got that person into Jannah, then he is a good person. Then all the bad characters that the other uh, spouse has seen in his spouse, they will be eliminated. It, it, they won't be there anymore. So there will be just enjoyment. فَجَعَلْنَا هُنَّ أَبْكَارَ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made, has made these wives, we made them virgins, and they will stay virgins. Uruban atraba, devoted to their husbands and of equal age. Uruban, uh, the woman who is called Arub, is the one who is so close to her husband. She talks to him nicely. She takes care of him. She does whatever he pleases him. And this is the, uh, the 
characteristic of the woman in the day after. Atraba means they are all at the same age. So no one would look at the wife of the other. They are all amazingly beautiful and they are at the same age. And this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared li ashabi yameen for the companions of the right. Thullatun min al-awwaleen wa thullatun min al-akhireen. There will be a company of the former people and a company of the later people. So a, a big group of the former people and a big group of the later people. وَأَصْحَابُ الشِّمَالِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الشِّمَالِ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to talk, uh, to move on to talk about uh, the third group. So he says, and the companions of the left. What are the companions of the left? And we mentioned earlier that, uh, um, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats something, then it means that he is saying something important that he wants us to pay attention to. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Those are the people who would get their, their record in their left hand. This is their description. So they say, I wish I didn't get my record. I wish I died. I wish I didn't know what, what, my, what my punishment is. My wealth did not avail me. My authority failed me. So it will be said to him, seize him and shackle him and into the fire, drive him. So these are Ashab al-Shimal. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving more description. He says, Fi samumin wa hamim. They will be in scorching fire and scalding water. So the heat would get into their bodies from the smallest pores in their skin. And a shade of black smoke. So yahmoom means smoke. And when they, they would see smoke, they would think that this is shade. But when they get to it, they will know that this is nothing except the smoke of the fire of the uh, uh, of the uh, blazing fire. لا بارد ولا كريم. Neither cold nor beneficial. So normally in dunya they know that when there is shade, then there is some coolness under it. But this shade has nothing at all. No, nothing called coldness in there. And the shade is not even shading. So why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that to them? Innahum kanu qabla thalika mutrafeen. Indeed, they were before that indulging in affluence. They were living in extravagant luxury. But this luxury was just for them only. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, has given them a lot that they did not give people. They did not give the, uh, they, were, they, they did not give any money to people. They did not give any effect, uh, uh, affection to people. They, they were stingy in everything. Money, feelings, health, care. They didn't care about anyone. Normally, when you have money, you give sadaqah, you give zakah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify, your, purify your, money, your money and increases it. But they, they were, they were extravagant in luxury, but on themselves only. 
Now imagine one thing, we want to understand something. If someone is so rich, this is good. And we all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us money, but this money to be only in our pockets and never in our hearts. When money is in the heart, then you will see uh, uh, different types of stinginess. But we want the money to be in our pockets, so to spend, so to give, so to pay, uh, to to take care of of the needy, so to do Allah's right in this money. Now, imagine there is someone who is very rich, and as I said, this is something good. Sayyidina Uthman was very rich and he uh, prepared a whole army with his own money. So for this person who is giving Allah's money, someone who is rich and he is giving Allah's, uh, Allah's uh, right in the money, he's paying zakah and he's uh, doing everything he wants. So he is, when he uh, spends his money, he is giving some benefit to others. For example, someone is rich. He sends his uh, clothes always to, to the cleaner. And he pays the cleaner for that. So his money is paid to someone who is in need for that job, who is uh, taking care of a family. And so the money is spent correctly in a good way it doesn't it this this type is not considered to be extravagance because he's helping others also if someone um, looked at uh, his uh, paint of the paint of his house and he says oh we need to do it again then he is helping the painter he is helping other people who are helping their families so their spending the money is not is in halal way and is has some benefit to others but those people ashabu shimal innahum kanu qabla dhalika mutrafin they were indulging in affluence wa kanu yusiruna ala alhinth alazim and they used to persist in the great violation. Al-hinth is just to uh, uh, um, do something that's against the, uh, uh, the, the rules, the rules of Allah. And they were persisting, they were insisting on what they were doing. وَكَانُوا يَقُولُونَ what they were saying also, وَكَانُوا يَقُولُونَ أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا وَعِظَامًا أَإِنَّا لَمَبْعُوثُونَ أَوْ أَبَاؤُنَا الْأَوَّلُونَ And they used to say, when we die and become dust and bones, our bones decay, are we indeed going to be resurrected? They would not believe in life after death. And our forefathers as well, are they going to be resurrected? So why would they why would they deny resurrection? Because they know that if if there is resurrection, then they will be in trouble. And if they were sure of their of resurrection, they wouldn't have done all those bad deeds that they used to do. So what's how how Allah answers them? قُلْ إِنَّ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ لَمَجْمُعُونَ إِلَى مِيقَاتِ يَوْمٍ مَعْلُومٍ Say, O oh Muhammad, indeed the former and the later people are to be gathered together for an appointment, for the appointment of a known day. So Allah is promising that there will be a day of judgment, that there will be a day where all deeds will be scaled, that there will be a day when everyone will be rewarded or will be punished. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla sanaktubu ma yaqul. No one will record what he says. 
So be careful. Watch your words. Watch your, your movements. Watch your intentions. There is a book. لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها. What this? What is this book? The, the man will ask and the day after when he receives his record, he will say, what is this book that leaves nothing small or great except that it has enumerated it? Allah promised. As uh, at its occurrence, there is no denial. Everyone will know that there is a day after. But those people deny it in, in, in dunya. They don't want to believe in it. Then, indeed, oh, those astray who are deniers, what will happen to them? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling these people, Ashabu shimal what will what their food will be laakiluna min shajarin min zaqqum you will be eating from trees of zaqqum what is zaqqum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about this type of tree in several surahs for example in surah al-dukhan ayahs 24 to for, uh, 42 to 46 he says inna shajarata zaqqum ta'amu al-athim Indeed, the tree of the comb is food for the sinful. Like murky oil, it boils within bellies, like the boiling of scalding water. In Surah to Safat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives another explanation. He says, Surah Safat between Ayah 62 and 65, or oh, the tree of Zaqqum. Indeed, we made it a torment for the, the wrongdoers. Indeed, it's a tree issuing from the bottom of hellfire. It's emerging fruit as if it was the head of the devil. Now imagine when you say the head of the devil, you would imagine something very ugly. If we say devil, everyone, each and every one of us would think of something so ugly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this tree is as ugly as shayateen. So what will happen from, so what will happen to them? And they will be eating from these trees. And filling with, with this type of tree with shajara to zaqqum, they will be filling their bellies. And drinking on top of it from scalding water. In Surah Muhammad, Ayah 15, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسُطُوا مَاءً حَمِيمًا فَقَطَّعَ أَمْعَاءَهُمْ and they are given to drink scalding water that will see, uh, that will sever their intestines. So what Allah says in Surah al -Kaf. and if they call for relief, if they call for water. They, they, they feel so thirsty because of the fire that they are thrown in. If they call for water, what will they have? They will be relieved with water like murky oil, which scalds their faces. Rich if that is the drink, and evil is the resting place. So they will be given from this water 
فشاربون شرب الهين and will drink as the drinking of thirsty camels imagine the uh, camels we know that camels are the ship of the desert because they endure not drinking for a long for several days but when they drink they drink a lot they save the water in their bodies so to use it when they need it so those people the people of of uh, of the uh, uh, of hellfire they will be drinking like camels when they are thirsty hadha nuzuluhum yawm al-din this is their accommodation on the day of judgment this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them on the day of judgment in, in Arabic, the word nuzul is, you can say someone got into the nuzul, means into a hotel, into a, a motel just to rest. And it also means what was prepared for the guests from uh, something like food or drink. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the people of the left, for those who got their book in their left hand. He prepared zakoon and he prepared scalding water. We have created you. So why, why do you not believe? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has created people. If someone owns a house, and he says, this house is mine. If he is lying, someone else would come and say, no, this is my house and this is the deed of the house. I am the owner of the house. And here is what proves that I am correct. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I created people, I created the universe, I created everything, no one, no one dared to say, I did that. And this is why Allah is the creator. نَحْنُ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us a few examples that shows his power, that shows his greatness, his majesty. He says, أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تُمْنُونَ have you seen that which you emit? So the fluid ha has in it the sperm and the nutfa. Okay? The semen. So had he not been a sperm from semen emitted, Allah is talking to me. Imagine where you come from. Is it, is it you who created? Or are we the creator? So out of this impeccable, despicable uh, fluid, the human, the baby is born. Now, whatever has a beginning will have an end. When there is life, when there is birth, there is death. We have decreed death among you. And we are not to be outdone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us of nothing. He created us and he perfected, he perfected his creation. And he is also able to take away this life by death. So Allah is giving uh, an example to man. Allah wants man to remember 
hey, don't don't get so uh, uh, impressed with these bounties that I have given you. You have a mind. You ha- you are free. You have power. You have uh, sight. You have you are able to walk. You can. Why? Because. With a small accident, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take the sight, can take a person's uh, ability to walk. He can paralyze people with just a blink of an eye. So when Allah subhanahu subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us these blessings, we have to take care of these blessings. He gave us the sight. We have to use it in halal way. We should not look at any haram. We should be looking into the Quran. We should be uh, encouraging our kids to, to hold the Quran and to read from the Quran, not to read from the, from the iPad or anything. Just be physically attached to the Quran. Use the, the ni'am that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you in good, in, in halal ways. وما نحن بمسبوقين على أن نبدل أمثالكم وننشئكم في ما لا تعلمون. So in that we will we will we can we will change you. We will replace you. We are able. We will change your likeness and produce you. We can produce you in that form which you do not know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Safat, إِنَّا لَقَادِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَن نُبَدِّلَ خَيْرًا مِّنْهُمْ وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُوقِينَ We are able to replace them with, with better than them and we are not to be outdone. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ النَّشْأَةَ الْأُولَىٰ فَلَوْ لَا تَذَكَّرُونَ And you have already known the first creation. So will you not remember? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created so many, so many nations before you. And he replaced the bad ones with good ones. You have to remember this issue. You have to be, uh, to get it always in mind. We have to be good. So Allah will be pleased with us. أَثَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَحْرُثُونَ and have you seen that seed which you grow, which you sow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created man from nothing, from, from let's say from, from uh, dirt, from the same thing of earth, the same component of earth. So getting life to go on is to get what this uh, ground, what this uh, ground can produce. So man is created, he needs food. So after, after we put the seed, after we uh, 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 put the seeds, after we water the seed, after uh, we flip the, 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 uh, the ground, the earth, so, this, all of this will help, will help the seed to grow. But think, is it you who make it to grow or are we the grower? لَوْ نَشَاءُ لَجَعَلْنَاهُ حُطَامًا فَظَلْتُمْ تَفَكَّهُونَ if we willed, we could make it dry debris, and you would remain in wonder. So earlier we talked about life. When Allah gives life, the opposite of that is that he can take this life away by death. Now, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about uh, farming is talking about growing seeds and what is opposite to that is that he has the ability to make this uh, this uh, uh, growing seed go just into nothing 
they would go bad. You would not be able to get the fruit of that. When they are, when they grow, then some storm can come and uh, destroy everything. Now look at the way how things are uh, growing. Let's take one seed. So when we get the uh, dirt prepared for the seed, so we throw the seed into the, the earth and we don't know what happens after that. We have a seed, remember. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made every seed into two splits. So when we throw this seed into the dirt, it gets inside and we water it, then this water will, will make this seed sprouting. The root would get down, down, down until it becomes strong enough. After that, this, these two splits of the seed would grow up, up the dirt, and they would be the two, the first two leaves of the sprouting seed. Now imagine, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this seed the ability to grow. Uh, he can he can do against that. We throw the seed, but what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Whatever we do, we say, and you throw not when you threw, but Allah threw that. In battles, when uh, they used to uh, throw the arrows, then it's, don't think that you are the one who got victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the ability, gave you the braveness to be able to throw this arrow against the enemy so the enemy would die. The same thing, don't think that you are the one who is growing things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give, will give the order to this uh, two split one seed so that it grows. So if Allah wills, then there might be uh, some wind, some uh, worm to eat that uh, seed, uh, the, those, uh, the plant, and you will find nothing to eat. <laughs> so when this happens, what would they see? What would they say? They would be saying, indeed, we are now in debt. We planted, now we watered, we took care, but nothing happened. بَلْ نَحْنُ مَحْرُومُونَ Rather, we have been deprived. They were deprived of the fruits. Nothing, it didn't, it didn't give any fruit, whatever they, they planted. So always remember, whenever you want to do anything, it's not you who will be doing it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the order for that thing to be performed, for to be done. And that's why when we want to do anything, we say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. By the name of Allah, by the power of Allah, we want this thing to happen. Ya Allah, we don't depend on our power, we depend on your power. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, and have you seen the water that you drink? So the, the three important things of life, the three necessities of life that we cannot live without, Food, 
water and air. Someone can stay without food for days and he can survive without food for a maximum period and that's depending on his body, a maximum period of 30 days because the body would be taking the, uh, uh, the fuel from the uh, fat that it that was uh, saved in the body so that fat will be uh, will be used for fuel of the body until there will be food again so the maximum time will be 30 days what about water the maximum time that someone can stay without water is 10 days. After that, no, no, no way, he will die. And for the air, it will be just maybe minutes if, uh, if uh, there is, uh, if someone is uh, forced to stop uh, the uh, breathing, inhaling, and exhaling. If, if that happens with, let's say earlier, if they wanted to kill someone, they would take a pillow and put it on, on uh, his nose and mouth. And within maybe a few minutes, he will be dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared these things, these necessities for man. And in the uh, previous ayahs, he talked about food. Who is growing this food for you? Who is taking care of the food? The power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about water now? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, أَأَنْتُمْ أَنْزَلْتُمُوهُ مِنَ الْمُزْنِ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْمُنْزِلُونَ is it you who brought it down from the clouds or is it we who bring it down? So how, how does this cycle happen? The water of the seas and the oceans evaporate. It goes up, forms the clouds and the clouds would get the rain poured down to us. So who is creating this? Who is, who, is, who is bringing this water down to us? Is it us or Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the most powerful. He is the, the best of the creator. He is the best creator. No other creator. He is the best creator. لَوْ نَشَاءُ جَعَلْنَاهُ أُجَاجًا فَلَوْ لَا تَشْكُرُونَ If we willed, we would make it bitter, salty. So why are you not grateful? So why you don't think? I want you to compare this ayah, لَوْ نَشَاءُ جَعَلْنَاهُ أُجَاجًا with the ayah uh, 65, لو نشاء لجعلناه حطاما. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention the lamb in the, uh, in the, uh, in the previous ayah? لجعلناه. And here he says جعلناه. So in the previous uh, section, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَأَنْتُمْ تَزْرَعُونَهُ so it's yes, you are planting the seed, you are watering the seed, you are doing something for that seed. You are taking care of that seed. So you have some type of work that you have done. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to destroy that, that plant, that whatever it grows. 
So you did something there. But here, Allah is the only one who gives the order for the clouds to bring down the rain. Okay? So there is no need to emphasize this. And that's why it is said, جَعَلْنَاهُ It's the, the action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. You did nothing to it. And that's the difference. Why we have the lamb there and we don't have the lamb in this ayah. لَجَعَلْنَاهُ And here we have جَعَلْنَاهُ if we are to talk about gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would need days and days and days. If we would look at all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we won't be able to know exactly how to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why when we want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, Allahumma la nuhsi thana'an alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. We cannot praise you enough. We cannot thank you the way you deserve to be praised and the way you deserve to be thanked. We cannot. So we say the highest form of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ya Rabbi laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik Thanks is for you Allah. Thanks is suitable to the grace of your face and the greatness of your supreme authority. I mentioned this earlier. Once there was a person who said this, the angels went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Ya Allah, you, you gave us a catalog to write uh, this much hasanat for someone if he does this uh, type of deed. And uh, this hasanat, this good deeds for someone who does, who says this dua. But we didn't, we, you, this slave of yours said something. We don't know how to, what to write for him in his record. What do we say? What do we do? He says, write it as is, and I will reward him. This dua again is, Ya Rabbi, laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. So we have always to remember these bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, the blessings, the countless blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. If we start to count, we would not be able to, we would not be able to count them. We are walking we are eating, we are drinking, we're using the restroom, we are, we are uh, using uh, uh, whatever Allah has created to serve us, we are uh, getting benefit of everything around us, we are uh, looking at things and we are watching with our eyes, we are hearing, we have skin, we have hair, we have countless things, countless blessings. We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. Afala tashkurun? Why you don't remember to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created you, he created your, your, your children. He, they don't need anyone to walk them. They don't need anything. They are per, per, he, he created us and perfected us. Why are you not grateful? If someone has a car, he would want another car. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for the blessings you have. 
لو كان لابن آدم واد من ذهب لتمنى أن يكون له واديان ولا يسد فاه إلا التراب if, if uh, uh, the son of Adam has a valley of gold he would wish another valley and nothing will suffice him except, except dirt he doesn't remember that he is going to leave everything behind and he is going to be in the grave alone he is not taking anything with him أفلا تشكرون أفرأيتم النار التي تورون And have you seen the fire that you ignite? أأنتم أنشأتم شجرتها أم نحن المنشئون Is it you who produced its tree or are we the producer? Who created that tree who you use its trunk just to, to get this uh, fire? نحن جعلناها تذكرة ومتاعا للمقوين We have made it a reminder and provision for the travelers What does this mean? When someone is traveling and if he wants to rest then he would ignite some fire and this fire would get, collect some wood and he will ignite it and he will, get, he will use the fire He will cook on this fire, he will uh, 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 get warm because of this fire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned several things now so far. He mentioned that he created man and he gave him life. Uh, life. And the opposite of that is death. And he mentioned that he created the plants and the fruits and the veggies and everything and the opposite of that is that he is able to make everything destroyed but look at this part allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said mentioned fire but he did not mention anything against it anything that would uh, uh, that would uh, take this fire down أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Why won't you remember that Jahannam is there for the non-believers? Jahannam is there for those who belie. Jahannam is there for those who deny. Remember. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given everything, everything to us. So we have to take, to look deeper and to understand the meanings. Why was this created? Why was man created? And how his life will end? Why was the, uh, the fruits and veggies and everything created? And how they will, they can be destroyed? And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created heaven and fire and this would be the resting place for people whom he has created. And we will end with the last ayah here. فَسَبِّحْ بِاسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ The word of subhanallah here when Allah said فَسَبِّحْ بِاسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ So, so, Exalt the name of your Lord, the most great. Whenever you go to see, uh, 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 whenever you go in nature and you see uh, something that's so beautiful, the first word you say, Subhanallah, MashaAllah, Subhanallah, exalted are you, Allah. When you see any wonder, you say, Subhanallah. And the scholars say, if you, if you say for each blessing, you see, Subhanallah, wa ma sha Allah, wa la quwwata illa billah, then you won't see any harm in, in this blessing that Allah has given you. Because you 
assigned this blessing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave it to you. So you are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings. And also remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala in shakartum la'azidannakum. Whenever you, I, you thank me, then I will increase you. So, Ya Allah, we thank you for all the blessings that you, that you have given us. Ya Rabbana, laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.